This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. August 24th, 2021 in the morning edition is live on today's show. Two new franchises will hit the Bahamas over the next few months. We get the public reaction to the upcoming general election and a senior magistrate writes a new book. So let's start the morning off right.
A goal is a dream with a deadline. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. Uh, LaDawn, I had a goal until I got married and had kids, and all oh, those were just <laughs> squash. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Hope you're having a great morning so far. So you're supposed to be inspiring me to get married and have children. Not inspiring at all. And yesterday we met your mother. Okay. Yesterday. Pretty young lady. Yes. Yeah. Pretty young and, and, and sprightly. I thought it was my bubbly. sister. Yeah. So what happened to, to you? I, I did not. I do not <laughs> give. Her, I did not give her or my grandmother any stress, so they were able to stay out. Yeah. So my kids are giving me stress, and that's so why that's I'm why starting to look over. Yeah. Oh, I'm gosh. starting to look over, but I'm, I'm happy that <laughs> everybody is okay. Yeah. How are you doing? The country seems to be in a fast-paced oh, mood. Yeah. Everybody, you're going the streets, just driving by and partying and. Forgetting Party about in. the COVID rules. But oh, please, 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 how much can I say? Please. please. Yes, still <laughs> under safety. That's a lot of please. I'm Stay sure home. they're listening. Stay I'm sure safe, they're listening yeah. to what you're saying. Yeah, but so we have... but, don't, but don't let it keep it down. You must go there sometime and have some fun and keep your spirits up. Or but else you can have be... fun at home. Yeah, you can have fun at home. Watch yeah. TV and that's what I've been doing. I've been watching Matlock, Murder, She Wrote. I find emergency the other day, Magnum P.I. In the heat of the night, too? Heat of the night, boy, I've been all into those old shows. Even Top Gun I watched the other night. Oh, you're showing your age, for sure. You're showing your age. I'm talking about showing the age of Desmond Saunders. Sometimes, sometimes Desmond Saunders be out there walking up and down trying to show his age. But that, that's, that's, not, that's not helping. Uh, but before not, we turn it over to Desmond, not. don't forget we have a trivia this morning, all courtesy of Janae's Uniform mm -hmm. Center. Mm -hmm. And this is a tricky question this morning. What is the most consumed, manufactured drink in the world? The number to call, 502-3870. What is the most consumed, manufactured drink in the world? And I know some people in this spirit of time may say I'm alcohol and what's your question guess? I was going to say water. Uh, and the phones are already okay. ringing, 502-387. So say let's, water. let's see what the answers are going to be. I want to hear some, but, uh, folks in here answer the phone. I want to hear all the answers this morning. But let's take it out to the streets where Desmond Sanders is standing by with traffic. Desmond, what's the answer? Hi. Well, the most uh, Coke soda, I don't know. Probably Coke soda, water. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I... <laughs> Fisher, Fisher, it's so good to have you back, man. And uh, I'm coming to you live from the intersection of Wolf and Blue Hill Roads right here with Constable Prince Dean Jr. Uh, overnight, a lot of incidents to report, right? Uh, somewhat a lot. Um, we had a total of eight traffic accidents. Uh, four of those were damaged only, and four were persons were injured. At this time, we have nine persons in hospital still. Reference to these traffic accidents. Uh, nothing major, but you know, traffic accidents tend to happen a lot uh, to the offenders on this, this, this street. What are some of the pressing concerns of traffic police at this time, at this juncture? Um, yes, uh, pressing concerns to, to, to distract the driving. Uh, persons tend to use their mobile device while operating their motor vehicle. Also, they, they want to tend to their children while driving. I, I, I would advise you to pull to the side of the street if you have an emergency call or if you want to deal with your child, pull to the side. Don't inconvenience other drivers while traversing to the streets. All right, so that's Constable Prince Dean Jr. joining me in the broadcast here live. Uh, Wolf Road, and the intersection of Wolf and Blue Hill Road. So I want to remind motorists to drive with extreme caution and care, obey the emergency orders. Charles and LaDon, back to you in the studios. Well, thanks a lot, Desmond. As we look ahead to the weather, 82 degrees, partly sunny. Winds east-southeast at 8 miles per hour. Humidity, 78%. Now, a high-pressure ridge remains established over the islands, while lingering Saharan dust will continue to keep hazy skies across the Bahamas. For all areas, weather partly cloudy and hazy, with a chance of a few isolated showers. Your daytime high temperature today, 91 degrees Fahrenheit, overnight low, 77. As we look ahead to Wednesday, weather very be cloudy, hot, and breezy, with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. On Thursday, it is going to be a pretty good day as well, as we look ahead to some thunderstorms out there in the air.
Just when the Bahamas was making inroads with its tourism numbers, the top industry has been dealt a serious blow. The U.S. State Department has updated its travel advisory, moving the Bahamas from level three to four, which is the highest. This advisory makes it clear that in the event Americans have to travel to the Bahamas, they ensure they are fully vaccinated. In the case of the unvaccinated, they're advised to get tested with a viral test one to three days before their trip. Extensive discussions with Ministry of Health officials has led to the decision by the Ministry of Education to start the 2021-2022 academic year virtually on Monday, August 30th. While face-to-face -face learning remains the preferred learning method for students nationwide, Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, declared in a national back-to-school address on Monday night that the ministry's mandate of safety first, education always, is paramount. He reasoned the bottom line consideration is the health and safety of students, administration principals, teachers, staff, guests, and the public. It is now an indisputable fact that the country's health resources, both public and private, are fully maximized. And while our schools are generally safe with a healthcare system already under severe strain, the ministry considers that out of an abundance of caution regarding containment of the possible spread of COVID-19, the Ministry of Education considers that online instruction is best at this time to assist the country in reducing the chances of experiencing a spike in COVID-19 cases. Again, as the aim is to get our students back in school face to face, but we will not put their health and their lives at risk, nor the lives of their teachers, administrators, parents, and staff. We are not insensitive to parents and guardians and their childcare needs. And we ask you please to consider carefully the reason for our decision and to bear with us during this brief period in your child's lives. 159 new cases of COVID-19 being reported in the Ministry of Health's latest release, 117 in New Providence, 15 in Abaco, 12 in Andros, 8 over in Grand Bahama, 3 in Bimini and Cat Key, 2 in the Berry Islands, and 1 apiece in Eleuther and Exuma, for an overall total of 17,545. Eight of those individuals from New Providence, along with one from Abaco and a case in Exuma, have a history of travel within the past 14 days. 74 of the new cases are male, the other 85 are female. Hospitalizations are down to 139, with 11 still in the intensive care unit. 3,356 cases remain active. There have been three new recoveries, bringing that number to 13,715. The COVID-19 death toll remains at 338, with 47 deaths still under investigation. The Food and Drug Administration has given full approval to the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for people 16 and older. The announcement coming Monday morning making the vaccine the first to be granted full approval for prevention of COVID-19 from the regulator. Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, imploring more volunteers to get involved in the fight against COVID-19, noting he cannot fight the pandemic alone. During his national address on Sunday, the Prime Minister called on religious leaders, the media, union leaders, political parties and candidates, businesses, civic groups and non-government organizations to continually encourage Bahamians to get the job. If we all, as opinion leaders, speak with one clear, determined, and consistent voice, more people will be encouraged to take the vaccine. Please, use your voices and platforms to spread the message that vaccines prevent hospitalizations. They prevent deaths. And that by us, Taking the vaccines in large numbers, we can go back to more openness. Family members and authorities are hoping that with your help, their loved one will return home safely. 79-year-old Robert James Bethel was last seen on Saturday, August 21st, around 4.30 a.m., leaving his number 37 New Hope Drive home. Bethel is dark-skinned, 5 feet 9 inches tall and slim build. If you can help the police find Bethel or have spotted him anywhere, call the Criminal Investigation Department at 502-9991 through 2, 502-9968, or 502-9967. 
The Broadcasting Corporation's general manager, Kaylisa DeVoe Isaacs, assuming regional broadcasting duties after she was elected president of the Caribbean Broadcasting Union at its 52nd annual General Assembly last week. DeVoe Isaacs has been on the CBU board of directors since June 2017 and was elected vice president in December 2020. Her presidential term ends in 2023. The Cabinet Office announcing that a state funeral for former Governor General, Deputy Prime Minister and Cabinet Minister, the Most Honorable Author Dion Hanna, will take place this Thursday, August 26, starting at 11 a.m. at Christ Church Cathedral on George Street. It's by invitation only and interment will follow at St. Matthew's Cemetery on Shirley and Church Streets. Hanna's body will lie in state in the foyer of the House of Assembly in Parliament Square from 9 a.m. this morning until the body departs for the church on Thursday. The public viewing is slated for 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Tuesday and on Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. A period of mourning will be from sunrise to sunset on Tuesday, at which time the national flag will be flown at half-mast throughout the Bahamas. And for the third time this season, John Quill Jones has been named the WNBA Eastern Conference Play of the Week after helping the Connecticut Sun to three wins to start the second half of the season. She averaged 18 points, 11 rebounds, and three assists per game during the span. It's the 10th time in her five years in the league that she has won the award. The Suns are back in action tonight at 7 o'clock when they take on the Las Vegas Aces in their third game of a five-game homestand. The Sun own a two-zip advantage over Vegas this season. Activate your power with the new Scotiacard Mastercard Debit. Experience the power of convenience with speedy payments made with a simple tap. Feel the power of safety with enhanced security. From our chip and pin technology, which grants you extra protection at the ATM, online and at point of sale protection. Your access is granted. Make purchases here or when you choose to travel with priceless Mastercard offers. Activate your power with the new Scotiabank Mastercard Debit Card. Getting your kids back to school is as easy as one, two, three with Omni Financial. Receive up to three thousand dollars in forty-eight hours at reduced fees with Omni Flash Cash. Pick up those back-to-school supplies with any of our financing partners, or send money worldwide to any of our four remittance brands with Omni Money Transfer. Visit any of our Omni locations throughout the Bahamas. Omni Financial for all your back-to-school financial needs and more. category added to the list of potential advanced poll voters in 23 locations identified for the over 30,000 applicants. Technology also playing an important part in this process, giving those persons living overseas an opportunity to be a part of the count. They can access the virtual application by scanning any one of the barcodes on the registration's website at www.elections.gov.bs or www.mygateway.gov.bs. Parliamentary Commissioner Lovardo Duncanson explains the other way ways potential voters can register to vote. If the person walks up to one of our center, fill out one of our forms, that individual can leave the form at that center and the form can receive attention. Also at our centers, there is the electronic interactive form that is available on our website. That form, the individual can complete the form online. Once they complete the form online, there is a link to the bottom of that form where the individual can click on that link and the link takes the completed form directly to one of our email addresses, which takes out, it eliminates that need for the completion of the form. And as the election machinery heats up, our Desmond Saunders took to the streets to get the views of registered first-time voters. Here's what he found out. With just three weeks remaining before voters head to the polls to elect a government to steer the affairs of the country for the next five years, a number of Bahamians are eager expressing their views on the overall democratic process. It, it's nothing new. I think everybody in the country, this is something that all of us as citizens have to do, so... I just feel, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say excited, but I feel like this is my duty. 
21-year-old Deantes Knowles will be heading to the polls for the first time. While somewhat optimistic about the process, he wants political parties to provide more details about their plans and the way forward. Now, I, I want to know more about, like, health care and schools and how, how, you, how you expect to... Uh to plead the, the debt of the country. I want to know how, what are you doing for my people in general. 42-year-old registered voter Tomiko Stubbs also wants the next government to address these issues. I would like issues addressed more likely for the schooling, better schooling for the kids, mm-hmm. and a better transparency for the young folks. You know, give them a better feel of what the government planning on doing for our new generation that's coming up. This voter wants the relevant authorities to ensure equity and full equality for those physically challenged and unfettered access when heading to the polls. Say, for example, have the right um, 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 steps as to, um, what do you call it now, the wheelchair ramps in which you can get up and down. Um, they can have um, more accessibility as for the, for the, for the um I don't want to use the word blind, but the self-impaired individual so that they can get up and down these these particular places. And there are feelings of resentment from this unregistered voter who cannot cast a ballot this time around. Whoever takes whoever takes office, what are those issues important to you? Uh, create opportunities for the youth to the, the, the earn some money. Over 190,000 persons are on the current voter register, and with election fever in high gear, Bahamians far and wide will set the tone for the next general election and the next five years. Local crowdfunding facilitator Awak X announcing the initial public offering of two new companies set to hit the Bahamian market. American franchise Red Lobster and Bahama Mai Pai, an augmented reality experience of visitors, intend to raise some $2.7 million and $2.1 million to jumpstart operations within the next few months. Chris Mortimer of Pinnacle Franchise Brands and Martian Cash of Bahama MiFi are excited to offer the available shares individually priced at $25 toward investment in either company. So long we've dreamed of the alternatives to the regular commercial banking and the reality is that we're very dependent on foreign investment. What you see emerging is a new Bahamas built on sound business principles, sustainable and about to change everything for the better in the Bahamas. There's certain brands that make sense for the Caribbean. Not all franchise brands make sense for the Caribbean, but there are a few brands that make sense. Red Lobster is one of those. Well, safety is always key, no matter what you are doing. But as Crystal Darling tells us this morning, it's even more important when you are in and out of the water. From crashes to capsizes, missing persons to drownings, this year has brought with it quite a few tragedies at sea, begging the need for water lovers to exercise safety. And that's be it at the pools, beaches, on jet skis, or boats. And for some good advice, we turn to aquatic director at Evolve Functional Fitness, Lisa Snow. When you're out boating, if you're in a situation where your boat is going down, it's capsizing, you never want to leave the boat. You always want to count the number of people that you're with, make sure they're safe. Get on the boat if you can. Usually boats aren't going to sink that quickly that you should be able to get on it. Worst case, if you have to swim, you're not going to swim any more than 100 meters. You're never going to make anything more than 100 meters. You must stay with the boat. It's imperative. Have all your safety checks done. Make sure you have a radio, um, means of being able to communicate with the shore. And if you're in the water, float on your back, get your face out, keep your airway open, and breathe, and just relax. In the event you've fallen off or out of your watercraft, here's what's best to do. You want to swim parallel to the shore, not directly into the shore. The waves will carry you in, but if there's rip currents, you're not going to swim into them. You're going to swim across them, and it's the safest way to go along the, swim along the beach. Paramount is your safety, and the only way you're going to be safe in the water is with a life jacket. That's the most important thing you have. I know we don't always wear them. We don't, we don't always carry them, but these are things that are now bringing it to light, that they, we need to have those with us at all times. Live jackets are the seatbelts of the sea, and if you're planning on doing activities in the deep, it's a huge plus to know how to swim. 
It can reduce your chances of drowning by 88%. So having the basic foundation of swimming, learning how to float, learning how to tread water, knowing the safety messaging, and, and learning to swim is a part of water safety. Water safety is not a part of learning to swim, but it's paramount that you have your water safety curriculum and messaging out there. For the little kids all the way to the adults, everybody needs to know how to be water safe. Thanks a lot, Crystal. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at the day in Bahamian history on August 24th, 1957. A new rule made it illegal to net bonefish anywhere in the waters of the colony. Prior to the new rule, the netting of bonefish was only legal in certain areas. Also on August 24th, 2000, the United States Navy announced a $1 million grant to rebuild a 6,800-foot airport runway in Matthewtown, Inagua for commercial and U.S. military use. Everything is changing, and your favorite hardware and home improvement store is getting with the program. We Buy You Sell is rolling out its new online shopping feature. If you go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, it's a quick and easy three-step process. Step one, browse the gallery and select your item. Step two, add to cart. And step three, check out. Go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, to shop with us today. Activate your power with the new Scotia Card MasterCard debit for a chance to win a brand new 2021 Toyota RAV4. Every spend gives you an instant entry to qualify. Shop online, at the gas station, or at any POS machine for your chance to win. Competition runs from now until August 31. Activate your power and win with the new Scotia Card MasterCard debit. Approved under Section 61G of the Gaming Act 2014. Applicable to Bahamas only. On the 2010 to the World Junior Track and Field Championship still in Kenya. We are joined this morning by Coach Bernard Roll and team manager Nikita Charlton from Kenya. Good morning and welcome to the morning edition. Good morning, Fisher. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, Coach, sum up the performance of Team Bahamas down there in Kenya. Well, uh, the, as you know, the the team has been, had, they did very well. Uh, we started the our track campaign with uh, Rima Ottoba. She finished fourth in the championship and uh, with a national record, actually. So we got off to a good start. Uh, we followed that with the 100, the guys, they, they did well. Both of them, PR, you know, you can't ask so much more than a personal best when it comes to this level. Carlos, uh, Carlos Brown and Wendell Miller. Uh, then we had Keyshawn. He and the javelin. He had a good a good meet. Uh, he made it to the finals and finished seven with a with a distance of 70.36, which was wasn't quite what he wanted, but you know, the weather was in his best. So that was the best he could have gotten out of it that day. In the 200, we had Wendell, Carlos. They both made it to the semifinals. Wendell finishing in ninth place with a personal best. Carlos finishing in 15th place with a personal best. Then we had Camille Rutherford, she made it to the semifinals. She finished in ninth place. Uh, and we also had Lakadia Le Cooper. She she was uh DQ, I think, for 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 a line violation. So she didn't make it out past the first round. Now the team is still there in Kenya. You were scheduled to arrive in town today. What's the situation? Because we got some word this morning that nine members of the Jamaican contingent tested positive for COVID. What is the situation and the safety of Team Bahamas? Good morning. Team Bahamas is presently in Johannesburg, South Africa. We left Kenya yesterday. And we are now awaiting an invitation from the U.S. Embassy 
to enter the U.S. So all is well. Team Bahamas left Kenya. Everyone was negative, tested, and we're just waiting on the invitation from the U.S. Embassy. Please and we'll be on our way home. Please explain that situation for, to, to the Bahamian public because they may be wondering why you're waiting on this invitation and what's the process? Well, the invitation from the U.S. Embassy, besides um, your um, B-1 visa, it's uh, um, stipulations that was put in place by, I guess, the Trump, Trump administration. So that's it. That was that is the only hold up now. But we are due to get a minister. Minister Lewis was very influential in helping to get us started with that, and we should be we should be sorted out by this evening. But Due to the time difference, because right now in Johannesburg, we are six hours ahead of time. So it's 1.30 now. So because of the time difference yesterday when we got the chat with Minister Lewis, that is why, you know, it was at the end of the day. So we should be up and ready to travel at least by this evening um, Johannesburg time. Well, thanks a lot, Nikki and Bernard. I hope you keep team Bahamas safe over there. Good to hear that our athletes will be heading back home all safe, unlike Jamaica's team with nine athletes tested positive for COVID. Hopefully, by the time you guys reach home, everybody will be okay. Congratulations on a job well done on representing the 242 over there in Kenya and be safe over there in South Africa. We are safe. We're wearing our masks. So we are safe and we continue, continuing to be careful in this country. Thanks a lot. Activate your power with the new Scotia Card Mastercard debit. Experience the power of convenience with speedy payments made with a simple tap. Feel the power of safety with enhanced security. From our chip and pin technology, which grants you extra protection at the ATM, online, and at point of sale protection. Your access is granted. Make purchases here or when you choose to travel with priceless MasterCard offers. Activate your power with the new Scotiabank MasterCard debit card. Activate your power with the new Scotia Card MasterCard debit for a chance to win a brand new 2021 Toyota RAV4. Every spend gives you an instant entry to qualify. Shop online, at the gas station, or at any POS machine for your chance to win. Competition runs from now until August 31. Activate your power and win with the new Scotia Card MasterCard debit. Approved under Section 61G of the Gaming Act 2014. Applicable to Bahamas only. attorney hoping to stimulate heart-to-heart -heart discussions about key issues in society. Here's Desmond Saunders. It's an economic uh, book. It's a law book. So the three disciplines to which I've been trained, I've put them all together and tried to give people who are interested in these areas an opportunity to understand the interconnectivity of it. After 20 plus years as a legal practitioner, senior magistrate, now author, Darren Troll Davis, has channeled his experience in the courts into a new book. We in the Bahamas have perhaps paid little attention to what's urgent, what is important to our well-being. It's history, of course, is one of those things that if you don't pay attention to it, you are likely to repeat it. And so if you look at the history of the Bahamas, you will discover that we've moved from a point where we focused on tourism. Um, we've experienced the pandemic. We have discovered that we're now in a point where tourism is important to us, but we have to consider an alternative. I've given several suggestions as to what those alternatives can be. The law, the social and economic effect of the Bahamas from 2000 to 2020 is his latest release. With over 200 pages, the book explores the question of citizenship, constitutional reform, the judiciary, and the impact of offshore banking on the local economy. History is something that we pay little attention to, and in fact, 
There has been no history book written since 1997. So this is the first uh, attempt in relation to Bahamian history that covers this period 2000 to 2020. Uh, so we as a people, we need to be cognizant of what's going on uh, in our country and what has gone on in the country. So the opportunity to get people to understand that when you hear that Parliament is making a law, that it's not in isolation. It is not something that you simply ignore. The author hopes his new book will stimulate dialogue among Bahamians about the relevant issues impacting them. The law, the social and economic effect on the Bahamas 2000 to 2020 is required reading for some local students within the public school system and is quickly making headlines in the book world. Desmond Saunders, ZNS Network News. So I take it the trivia answer was you not said water. water. No. Katie said Coke soda. Somebody said something else. I don't want to say some beverage. But the answer is tea. Actually, tea is the most consumed manufactured oh, drink wow. in the world. And the vendor mm -hmm. this morning of this gift certificate, courtesy of Genesis Uniform Center, is Veronica Ferguson, who guessed it right. And you can pick up your mm -hmm. gift certificate for your school supply here for the Broadcasting Corporation of Bahamas anytime today. Tea, would you have ever thought about tea? Well, but I was close. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was close. I said water, so yeah. Tea, I don't. Yeah. Do you drink tea? No. So I'll be drinking some tea all day today. Definitely not. He doesn't drink tea, guys. And be sure to stay tuned into the ZNS Network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7. And that's a wrap for us this morning for the entire team. I'm LaDawn Davis. Have a great morning, everyone. <laughs> You're watching the ZNS Network, the people's station.